Hello guys, welcome to Online Web Tutor. I am Sanjay. We are learning Laravel 8 Framework tutorial. This is our part of 15. Inside this video, we are going to create a form and submit a form to a server. And also guys, if you are looking up the blog articles of KickPHP 4, CodeIgniter 4, MySQL, WordPress, then you need to visit this blogging website. If you go to the browser, this is the blogging website and inside this we have different categories of blog articles like we have CodeIgniter 4, WordPress, CakePHP 4 and many more. Inside each category of this drop down have their different different blog articles with interesting contents. And also inside this blogging website we have created a section called create an article. This is for the guest post publication. If you are interested to publish your article with us, simply you need to provide your details as well as blog post details. It will be submitted to the admin for the approval. Once approved, it will be published inside this blogging website. So it is quite interesting to publish an article with online web tutor. Back to the topic. Inside this video, we are going to create a form and submit form data to server. Inside this video, we are not going to cover model based concept. It means we are not going to save form data to database table. And also, we will not cover form validation because these are the topics we will discuss separately in the next videos. Back to editor. And here we have now web.php which is route configuration file. So first of all, let's create a controller and inside that controller we will create a method and by the help of that method actually we will call a view file. So if I back to terminal, press Ctrl C to close the development server and let's say php artisan make controller and next we need to pass controller class name so if i say let's say our controller class name is something student controller now if i press enter as we can see that controller created successfully back to editor go inside this app directory http controllers and if i reload this editor Again go here and as we can see that we have now created a studentcontroller.php file. Now inside this file, first of all we need to create a method which is going to actually call a view file. So let's say public function and we will make a method something my form. And inside this my form let's return a view file so return view and inside this the file name we have something my hyphen form dot blade dot php i'm going to copy this name copy that back to our resources folder go inside views directory and let's create a template file something my form dot blade dot php and also we need to create a route to call this layout so here let's say route get method and it will be something let's say add student and as we know that in laravel 8 we have a different syntax to call our controller methods so here first of all we need to import our controller so use let's say student controller which is inside controllers folder http now if you go inside this array let's say student controller what we have imported it's a class and inside this class we need to use the method and the method name we have called my form so copy and pasting it here all we have done inside this if i type a simply h1 tag and let's say that this is or simply let's say please fill the form if we save check the route at student first let's start our development server started 
back to browser and if we type something add hyphen student please fill the form so successfully we have rendered now in the next we need to create a form so let's create a form something form with HTML form tag and inside this I am creating a paragraph tag and let's say name it's not beam actually it's name and here inside this we need to create an input type text box so, so input type text name equal to something let's say we have the name attribute as name and I am writing a placeholder and it will be something enter name so this is the first input we have created inside this form simply I'm going to copy and paste let's the second input we want something email address this is input type email here we have the name attribute let's say email and enter email as a placeholder value now next we have let's say a mobile number of this student I am taking the name attribute as mobile so enter mobile and finally we need to create a submit button so it's a button submit and this button type as a submit button if we save go to browser reload this page and as we can see that if we make some zoom so we have a form inside this form we have three different input fields with different different values asking for name email and mobile number now right now when we submit there is no attributes defined here like what is the method type and the action so first of all we need to write our action and method inside this form tag so inside this form opening tag let's say method equal to post because we are going to submit our data via post request type because while submitting form data using get request type it will send all the data inside query string values this is a simple form so we can use get request type but when we are submitting a like let's say a secure data then get request type is not a valid option so this will be post and action action means this form submitting URL so inside this we to actually make a URL let's say submit student now if we save go inside this web.php because we need to create a route with the name of route name something submit hyphen student with post request type go to web.php what I will do simply copy and paste the first route we have created to render our form layout next this is all about post submit URL it means form data post here we need to write submit hyphen student what we have given inside this action value submit hyphen student and the method type equal to post because we are hitting this URL with post request type so post here this is the controller and let's say that we are going to make a method inside our student controller that is submit student now save all these changes back to controller let's say public function submit student and inside this method we need to read all the data what we are publishing from this form so simply if we go inside this method and let's say print r to read all the values we need to use the request class request class gives access over the values or requested parameters so first of all we need to actually import our request so request class and this request class will be of eliminate http request what I will do simply copy this class name go here inside this method and let's create an instance of that 
So by the help of this request instance, what I will do, simply we are going to read all the values. So here we have request and all method. So successfully we are rendering our layout and getting all the values at the server end. Let's see that how it works. If I back to browser, reload this page and when we submit any value, let's say that these are dummy values, click on submit and here we are getting an error something 419 that is page expired. We are using Laravel so while submitting any type of form actually we need to pass a CSRF token value. Also we can configure that these routes are not supportable with one CSRF token so also we can do that. But right now we need to pass a CSRF token inside this form. So we have several ways to pass CSRF token value. So what I will do and don't worry about that what is CSRF, why we use it, we will discuss in upcoming videos. So right now we need a token. So writing curly pairs CSRF underscore filled. This is a method means a helper function we are calling actually to generate the dynamic input type hidden field with token value. Save this pages go and reload this page and if we inspect to see the dynamic generated HTML element inside this element section you should see a input type hidden field name attribute as underscore token and this is the value this is dynamic generated CSRF token now when we submit this form click on submit as we can see that we are getting all the values here we have token name email and the mobile number because at the controller we have written request all method which is going to access all the values instead of all what i will do we have also a alternative option we need to write input method save all these changes go here reload this page fill again all the values these are dummy values click on submit and as we can see that we are getting the same output let's say that we are not interested to get all the values instead we want to get only the name value so how can we access simply inside this input method we need to pass the name attribute of that respective field so we want the name value need to go inside this form check about the name attribute here its name we need to pass it here all we have done go and reload this page pass some value let's say that we have passed these values click on submit and successfully we are getting all about the name value so this is all about submitting a form to a server additionally Let's say that this is a CSRF field function which is going to generate a dynamic hidden field. If we are not interested to use this method, we have an alternative way. Instead of helper function, also we have CSRF as a directive. If we save, go here, reload this page and again if we inspect as we can see that inside this form we have a hidden field so we have multiple ways to actually generate input type hidden with CSRF token this is the second approach if we go inside this student controller inside this controller we are hitting this submit student method which is via post request type so here we have two different routes to submit a form something add student with get method submit student with post method so is there any way to make a single route for the get request type and post request type yes we have so how can we do simply let's say we need to change this get method to a match method what I will do comment this route comment this route and instead of get we will use a match method 
Inside this match method, we need to pass the first values an array. Inside this, we need to pass our requested methods. So let's say get and post. It means by the help of get request type and post request type, we are going to hit this route. After hitting this route, the same method will be used. So what I will do, back to our form, instead of submit stern because it is no longer, instead of that, we need to pass add student. So we have two different routes. First, the same route is for the get request type and the same route add student for submit our form data. How can we handle inside controller? Go here. Now my form is going to handle the get and post method. So first of all, while submitting our data inside that same, same method, we need to actually read all about our post request method type. So here, let's if request, which is an instance of this request class, we need to pass inside this method. So let's say request object. And here inside that, we have a method. We have method as a method name. It will return the request type. By the help of that, actually, we have hit this method or we have called that. Also, instead of getting method type, also we have is method method. By the help of that, if we pass, let's say, post, it means we will go inside this if block if this method will be hit by post request type. Now the same piece of code, printing the name value only, go and paste it here. This is not request, we have this time req object. So pasting it here, go and reload this page. Let's pass some dummy value, click on submit. And as we can see that the same route is now used for the get request type and for the post request type. So successfully guys, inside this video, we have covered step by step how can we create a form and submit the form data to server. In the next videos, we will extend this form to form validation as well as we will save the form data to our database table. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.